Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learned some of the cache replacement policies. So in continuation to that streak, today we are going to learn about MRU, LRU, pseudo LRU and LFU. Basically, the recency and the frequency based policies. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now let's talk about the recency based policies first. Although there are quite a few variations available of these out there, we will study about the most important three. Starting with the most recently used or MRU. Next up is least recently used which is widely known as LRU. And finally we will study the pseudo least recently used or PLRU. Now all of these they use edge bits. Because keeping the track of the order of access of the blocks is the key concept behind recency based policies. Now let's get to know about these in a bit details. Coming to the most recently used or MRU, this cache replacement policy evicts the most recently referred block. And it works well with the block requests of cyclic pattern. Now let's understand these with the help of an illustration. Consider this block request and a fully associative cache with four lines. Now suppose when the main memory block number one is requested by the processor, it got placed inside the cache line number zero. Thereafter, during the block request number two, the main memory block number two got placed inside the cache line number one. Similarly, during the block requests three and four, the main memory block numbers three and four got placed inside the cache line numbers two and three respectively. Now during the block request number 5, the cache is already full. So we have to go for replacement. Now if you observe, the contents of the cache block number 3 is the main memory block number 4, which is the most recently referred block. Therefore, the contents of the cache block number 3 will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block that is block number 5. Now thereafter for block request number 1 it will be a hit because the main memory block number 1 is already present inside the cache. The same thing will happen for the next two block requests that is the block requests 2 and 3 because the main memory block numbers 2 and 3 are already present inside the cache. Now coming to the block request number 4 at that point the cache is again full so we have to go for replacement. Now from all the block requests, if you observe, right before 4, the most recently referred block was block number 3. Therefore, the contents of the line number 2, that is the block number 3 will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block or block number 4. Now coming to the block request number 1, it will again cause in hit because the main memory block number 1 is already present inside the cache and similarly for the block request number 2, it will again be a hit because of the same reason. Now this is how the most recently used cache replacement policy works. Now if you observe the block requests a bit carefully, you can notice there are these two patterns. And then again if you observe, these two are also a pattern. And these are nothing but the cyclic patterns that we mentioned earlier. So this is the underlying concept behind most recently used cache replacement policy. Now next up is LRU or least recently used. Now this cache replacement policy exploits the temporal locality principle. Now if you remember temporal locality means the block which got accessed lately is likely to be accessed in the near future. And that's why this cache replacement policy evicts the least recently referred block. Let's understand this with the help of this following block requests and a fully set associative cache with four lines. Now along with that, in order to understand this cache replacement policy properly, we are going to maintain a list that will dictate the most and the least recently used blocks that too in order. Now suppose during the block request number 0, the main memory block number 0 got placed inside the cache line number 0. At this point, the block 0 is the most recently used block inside the cache. Now coming to the block request number 1, suppose it got placed inside the line number 1 inside the cache. Now at this point of time, the block number 1 is the most recently used block inside the cache and the block number 0 is the least recently used block inside the cache. 
Now coming to the block request number 2, suppose the main memory block number 2 got placed inside the cache line number 2. Updating the list by making the main memory block number 2 the most recently used block inside the cache. Thereafter, during the block request number 3, suppose the main memory block number 3 got placed inside the cache line number 3. Updating the list where the main memory block number 3 is now the most recently used block inside the cache and the block number 0 is the least recently used block inside the cache. Now during the block request number 4, the cache is full. Now we have to opt for replacement. Now according to this cache replacement policy, the least recently used block inside the cache will be replaced and from all these block requests, the block number 0 is the least recently used block inside the entire cache. Therefore, the content of the line number 0 will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block that is block number 4. Now this will also update our list making the block number 4 the most recently used block and the block number 1 the least recently used block in the entire cache. Now during the block request number 2, it will result in a cache hit because the block number 2 is already present inside the cache. However, this will also update our list making the block number 2 the most recently used block. Similarly, the block request number 3 will also result in cache hit since the block number 3 is already present inside the cache. However, this will also update our list making the main memory block number 3 the most recently used block inside the entire cache. Now the next block request that is the block request number 1 will also result in a cache hit because the main memory block number 1 is already present inside the cache. However, it will update the list making the least recently used block that is block number 1 the most recently used block inside the entire cache. Now during the block request number 5, the cache is again full, so we have to opt for replacement. Now as our list suggests, the block number 4 is the least recently used block inside the entire cache. So we evict the contents of the line number 0, making space for the newly requested block that is the block number 5. This also updates our list, making the block number 5 the most recently used inside the entire cache. And now, the block number 2 is the least recently used block inside the entire cache. Now during the block request number 6, the cache happens to be full again, therefore we have to opt for replacement again. Now as our list suggests, the least recently used block inside the entire cache is block number 2. Therefore we evict the contents of the line number 2 and make space for the newly requested block that is the block number 6. Which will again update our list making the block number 6 the most recently used block inside the entire cache and the block number 3 the least recently used block inside the entire cache. Now this is how LRU cache replacement policy works. Now let's observe how it is implemented. Now we have fully associative cache with 4 different lines. Now suppose as 8 bits, 2 bits are assigned for each one of them and they are initialized as 00, 01, 10 and 11. Now for the sake of better understanding, let's convert them into decimals. That is, the cache line number 0 is assigned with the age bit 0 and for cache line number 1, the age bit is 1, for line number 2, the age bit is 2 and for line number 3, the age bit is 3. Now the newly requested block will always be placed whichever lines has the age bit as the list. Therefore, for the block request 0, since the age bit of the line number 0 is 0, it will be placed inside the line number 0. Now at this point, the line number 0 is the most recently used Therefore, we change its age bit to 3. And for all the other lines which had the age bits greater than 0, the age bits are updated decrementing 1 from each of them. Now for the block request number 1, since the age bit for the cache line number 1 is 0, we place the main memory block number 1 inside the cache line number 1. And at the same time, the age bit for the line number 1 is updated to the max that is 3. And for all the other lines which had age bits greater than 0, they will be updated decrementing 1 from each one of them. Now during the block request number 2, since the cache line number 2 is having 0 as its age bit, the main memory block number 2 will be placed inside the cache line number 2. Also, the age bit will be replaced by 3, indicating this as the most recently used block. And all the other lines which had age bits greater than 0 will be updated decrementing 1 from each one of them. Thereafter, during the block request number 3, 
Since the age bit of the line number 3 is 0, the main memory block number 3 will be placed inside the line number 3 and at the same time the age bit will be updated to 3 and the similar drill will be followed. Now during the block request number 4, the cache is full, so we have to opt for cache replacement. Now according to the age bits, the cache line number 0 is holding the least recently used block. And that is actually true because from all these block requests, the block request number 0 was the oldest. Therefore, for eviction, the contents of the cache line number 0 will be selected. And after eviction, it will make space for the newly requested block that is the block number 4. Thereafter, the age bit of the line number 0 will be updated to 3 and all the other age bits will be decremented by 1 during updation. Now for the next block request, that is the block request number 2, it will be a cache hit and since now it is the most recently accessed cache block, therefore the age bits of that cache block number 2 will be updated to 3. However, the age bit which was lesser than 1 will remain the same. Now for the age bits greater than 1, the same drill will be followed that is, they will be updated by decrementing one from each one of them. Now during the block request number 3, it will again result in a cache hit because the block number 3 was already present inside the cache. And that makes this the most recently used block inside the entire cache. Therefore, the age bits of the line number 3 will be updated to 3. However, the age bit of the line number 1 will remain the same since it is lesser than 1. And the age bits of line number 0 and 2 will be decremented by 1 during updation. Similarly, for the next block request, that is block request number 1, it will result in a cache hit because the main memory block number 1 was already present inside the cache, making the main memory block number 1 the most recently used block inside the entire cache, and that will update the age bit of the cache line number 1 to 3, and all the other age bits will be decremented by 1. Now during the next block request, that is the block request number 5, the cache is full. And as the age bits reflect, the cache line number 0 is holding the least recently used block. So for eviction, the contents of the cache line number 0 is selected, making space for the newly requested block, that is block number 5. Now the content of the cache line number 0 becomes the most recently used block, and hence the age bit of the cache line number 0 is updated as 3. And all the other age bits get decremented by 1. Now during the block request number 6, the cache is again full. Now from the age bits we know, the cache line number 2 holds the least recently used block. Therefore, the contents of the cache line number 2 is selected for eviction and gets replaced by the newly requested block that is the main memory block number 6. Now this will update the age bit of cache line number 2 from 0 to 3 and all the other age bits will be decremented by 1 during updation. Now just for fun, consider another block request, that is block request number 5. Now this block request will result in cache hit, since the block number 5 is already present inside the cache. So now the block number 5 is the most recently used block inside the entire cache. Therefore, the age bit of the cache line number 0 will be updated from 2 to 3. Now all the other age bits which were lesser than 2 will remain the same. And the age bit which was greater than 2 will be decremented by 1. Now from all these, I hope you understand that the implementation of the least recently used cache replacement policy rigorously uses the age bits. Now let's analyze this implementation. Now for four lines, we have four different age bits, don't we? Now if we consider the sequences of the age bits, for the first place, we have all the four options. That means, in this place, we can place any of the values from these. Now suppose from all these, 2 is selected. That leaves out 0, 1 and 3, that means 3 choices for the second place. And now, if 1 is selected from all these, we are left with 2 different options for the next or the third place, that is 0 and 3. Now if from these 2, 3 is chosen for the third place, then we are left with only 1 choice for the fourth place. So for the first place, we have 4 options. For the second place, we have three options. And for the third place, we have two options. And finally, for the fourth place, we are left out with only one option. Therefore, the total number of sequences can be found out, multiplying the option for the first place, with the second place, with the third place, and with the fourth place. And this is nothing but four factorial. Now, in order to keep track of four factorial number of sequences, we will be needing 
log 4 factorial base 2 applied by ceiling that is 5 bits because 4 factorial is 24 and applying log base 2 ceiling to that we get 5 bits. So in order to keep track of all the 8 bit sequences for only 4 lines, we will need 5 bits. Now think about it. If we had 8 lines in our cache, in that case we had to use 8 different 8 bits. And with 8 different 8 bits, the number of sequences would have been 8 factorial. And in order to keep track of all those 8 factorial sequences, we would have required log base 2 8 factorial ceiling that is 16 bits. Now these many bits seem manageable, don't they? In that case, just think about set associative cache organization. Or to be precise, let's think about 4-way and 8-way set associative cache organizations. In both the cases, 5 bits and 16 bits will be needed per set respectively. And the least recently used cache replacement policy along with age bits keep track of the sequence of age bits rigorously. And therefore it is associated with huge overhead for caches with higher associativity. That means with caches with higher associativity like 8-way, 16-way, least recently used becomes very impractical to implement. Instead of LRU, in that case, the next cache replacement policy is used, that is, the pseudo least recently used cache replacement policy. Now, pseudo means false, and as the name suggests, this cache replacement policy generates approximate measures for replacements. That means, instead of strictly following LRU, we are following an approximation of it. Let's understand the concept of this with the help of an illustration. Suppose these are the block requests and we have a fully associative cache with 8 lines. Now in PLRU, in order to keep track of the order of access, we also use some bits. The first bit of them will split the cache in two halves, the upper half and the lower half. Now along with this, the next set of bits split the entire cache in four quarters. And finally, in the last level, four different bits are used to keep track of all the different lines. Now, let's suppose for each bit position, 0 signifies down and 1 signifies up. Therefore, for the block request 0, if we want to place that block inside line number 0, from the first bit, we need to move towards the upper half. Then again, from this bit, we again need to move to the upwards. And finally, this bit place will again have 1 as value so that it can point towards the line number 0. Now, for the block request number 1, we will be selecting the line number 1. In that case, in this bit place, instead of 1, we have to place 0 so that we can point to the line number 1. Now, coming to block request number 2, it will be placed in line number 2. And therefore, from this bit place, we have to move downwards. And thereafter, in this bit place, we will be moving towards the upwards again, selecting the line number 2. Similarly, in case of block request number 3, in order to place that block inside the line number 3, from this bit place, we need to move towards the downwards, selecting the line number 3. Thereafter, for block request number 4, if we want to place the main memory block inside line number 4, now from this bit place, we need to move downwards. Thereafter, in these two bit places, we need to move upwards in order to reach to the cache line number 4. Then again, for the next block request, that is block request number 5, if we want to place the main memory block number 5 inside cache line number 5, all we need is to make this bit place 0 so that it can point downwards, finally accessing the cache line number 5. Then again, for the block request number 6, if we want the main memory block to be placed inside the line number 6, from this bit place, we need to face downwards and thereafter from this bit place, we need to face upwards so that we can access the line number 6. Now in case of the block request number 7, if we want the main memory block to be placed inside the line number 7, all we need is to convert this bit place to 0 so that we can face downwards selecting the cache line number 7. Now at this point, if you observe closely, for every two lines, these bit places are pointing towards the most recently accessed blocks. 
Thereafter, these two bits are pointing towards the most recently accessed quarters. And finally, this bit is pointing towards the most recently used half. Now coming to the next block request, that is the block request number 2, it will be a cache hit since it's already present inside the cache. Now in order to get to this, first we need to change this bit place into 1 so that we can point upwards and thereafter we need to change this bit to 1 so that we can get to the line number 2. Now for the next block request that is 1, it will again be a cache hit since it's already present inside the cache. Now in order to get to this, all we need is to convert this bit place to 1 so that it can face upwards. And finally we can get to the line number 1. Now coming to the next block request, that is the block request number 9, the cache is already full. Now replacement should be opted for. Now during replacement, we first start with the first bit. Now since it is pointing towards the half where the most recently used block has been kept, therefore we convert this bit place to 0. Now for this bit place we will also do the same, that means toggle this bit to 1. And the same will be done for the last bit place, toggling it to 1. And therefore for eviction, the main memory block number 4 which is the content of the cache line number 4 will be selected. Although based on LRU, block number 0 was the least recently used block. And since instead of LRU, we are using an approximation of that, therefore selection of block 4 for eviction is equally good in this case. Therefore, the block 4 will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block that is block number 9. Now coming to the next block request that is the block request number 8, the cache happens to be full so we have to opt for replacement. So we have to convert this bit place to 1 so that it can face upwards. Thereafter we need to convert this bit place to 0 so that it can face downwards. And thereafter we need to convert this place to 0 as well so that it can face downwards. Therefore, for eviction the block number 3 will be selected. Now if you observe it is actually working like LRU because after 0, 3 happens to be the least recently used block because 1 and 2 were accessed again. Therefore the block number 3 will be replaced by the newly requested block that is block number 8. Now from all this I hope you understand that PLRU or pseudo LRU actually works almost as same as LRU. However, in order to keep track of the order of the access of the blocks, we actually require lesser number of bits. Because for a cache with 8 lines, we actually needed 4 plus 2 plus 1 that means 7 bits. Therefore, for a cache with 16 lines, we will need actually 15 bits. So in general we can state, for a cache with n lines, we will only need n minus 1 bits. And that will certainly reduce the implementation cost. Now at any given point of time, using these bits, we can actually find out the most recently used block inside the cache. And for that, all we need is to follow the bit starting from the first bit. That means 1, 0 and 0 will give us the most recently used block inside the cache. And in order to find out the PLRU block inside the cache, that means the block which will be selected for eviction during the next cache replacement, so in order to find that, starting from the first bit, we have to go into the opposite direction. So since it is facing upwards, we need to go downwards, therefore 0 in this place. And since this also is facing upwards, we need to go downwards, that is 0 in this place as well. And finally in this place, it's already going downwards, so we have to head upwards, therefore 1 in this place. And in that case, block number 6 will be the PLRU block. Now for a fun fact, PLRU or pseudo LRU was first introduced in Intel's 80486 microprocessors. So this is the underlying concept behind pseudo least recently used cache replacement policy. So with that, we have come to an end of the discussion of the recency based policies. Now let's talk about the frequency based policy. Now from these, the least frequently used or the LFU cache replacement policy is the most popular one. Now as the name suggests, this replacement policy evicts the least frequently referred block from the cache. And for the execution of that, frequency is recorded for all the blocks present inside the cache. 
Now let's try to understand this concept with the help of the following block requests and the fully associative cache with four lines. Now as mentioned earlier, we are going to maintain a frequency list which will help us during block replacement. Now during the block request number 0, since it's a fully associative cache, it can be placed inside the line number 0. So when it is placed inside the line number 0, the frequency of that will be initialized as 0. However, so far the block number 0 has been referred once, therefore the frequency will be updated to 1. Thereafter, during the block request number 1, suppose it is placed inside the line number 1 and the frequency is initialized to 0, then again, since it's been referred once, the frequency will be updated to 1. Now, for the block request number 2, it will be placed inside the line number 2 and the frequency will be listed as 1. Similarly, during the block request number 3, it will be placed inside the line number 3 and its frequency will be set to 1. Because of the same reason that the main memory block number 3 has been referred only once till now. Now coming to the next block request, that is the block request number 4, the cache is full. Now looking at the frequency list, we can't really determine which block to select for eviction because all of them have the same value. Now it's a tie. And always remember, for tiebreaker, we use first in, first out or FIFO. That means, among all these blocks which are present inside the cache, the first one to get placed inside the cache, that is the block number B0, will be selected for eviction. Therefore, it will be evicted and make space for the block request number 4. Now, since the block number B0 is no longer present inside the cache, the frequency of that will be removed and in place of that, the frequency of block number 4 will be listed and initialized as 0. Also, since the main memory block number B4 has been referred only once till now, therefore, its frequency will be updated to 1. Now, for the next block request, that is block number 2, it will be a cache hit since it's already present inside the cache. However, its frequency will be updated as 2, indicating that this block has been referred twice so far. Thereafter, during the block request number 3, it will also be another hit because it's present inside the cache and also its frequency will be incremented. Now coming to the next block request, that is block request number 1, it will be a cache hit because it's already present inside the cache and also its frequency will be incremented. Now during the block request number 5, the cache happens to be full again. Therefore, we have to opt for replacement. Now looking at the frequency list, we can determine that the block number 4 is having the least frequency among all of them. Therefore, the block number 4 will be selected for eviction and it will be replaced by the newly requested block number 5. Thereafter, since the block number 4 is no longer present inside the cache anymore, we will remove that from our frequency list and after that initialize the block number 5's frequency as 0. However, since the block number 5 has been referred once till now, therefore, its frequency will be updated to 1. Then again, for the block request number 6, the cache is again full, therefore, we have to opt for block replacement. Now, looking at the frequency list, it's telling us that the block number 5 is having the least frequency. Therefore, this block number 5 will be selected for eviction and will be replaced by the newly requested block number 6. Also, since block number 5 is no longer inside the cache anymore, we will remove that from our frequency list and the frequency for newly inserted block number 6 will be initialized to 0. However, since the block number 6 has been referred once till now, therefore, its frequency will be updated to 1. So, this is how the least frequently used cache replacement policy works. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I believe now you have a lucid understanding of all the different cache replacement policies. In the next session, we are going to solve some interesting previous year numerical problems on LRU cache replacement policy. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.